Hey everybody, how's it going? So one of the things that we talk about on this channel a lot as it relates to right to repair is whether or not you own your device. Kyle Williams at iFixit has famously said many times, if you can't fix it, you don't own it. Now there is that conspiracy theory, the conspiracy theory that you will own nothing and be happy. And the idea behind this conspiracy theory is that you will be in a society where you're not allowed to own things anymore. I think the idea when that statement was said was that it will be so convenient to lease or rent things or have things as a service that you will not want to own things. However, the reason that this conspiracy theory has been able to become very popular is because many companies that used to allow you to simply purchase a device and do what you want with it are moving towards a model where you don't really own it. You're renting it from them. Or if something goes wrong, you have to buy a new one. Or you're dependent on the manufacturer for things you otherwise were not dependent on the manufacturer for. And the issue is that many of these things that people will call conspiracy theories sadly have a way of slowly, even if not intentionally, becoming true. So this here is a device that I was made aware of that is very valuable to photographers. It's a little storage box. It'll usually come as a 200 or 500 gigabyte SSD. And you can see it's very, very obvious that you're paying for more than just the storage. 512 gigabytes for $600. That's not really cost effective or convenient if you are purchasing a solid state drive. You can obviously get something way cheaper than a 256 gigabyte SSD for $500. A lot of what you are paying for when you purchase this product are the additional features and functionality. And those additional features and functionality are only accessible if you utilize their application. And in this article, what they say is that this device that was launched via Kickstarter about six or seven years ago is no longer making the application available. It says the device used the smartphone app to make it easy for creators on the go to back up, view, edit, and share without having to lug a laptop around. Following the success of the device, they launched a second one, and it seems like the application is no longer there. So it says here, the Narbox app has disappeared from the Apple App Store, making it so owners of the device can no longer use all the main features they purchased it for. This also presents an unforeseen problem for new customers because this is still in stock on Narbox's website. So they are still selling this. Amazon, Adorama, and B&H are all still selling this. Now, Amazon and B&H selling it does not aggravate me very much. Again, Adorama and B&H may not even be made aware yet that they pulled the app from the App Store. How are they supposed to know? However, the company selling it on their own website demonstrates how shitty they're acting when they're selling a product who's all, where many of the features that they are advertising over here, many of these features will never work because they're not making the application available. Now, many people have asked, hey, I need to install your app, but it's no longer in the app store. What's up? I'm having the same issue. Uh, you know, let's chat between I need, you know, I need an app. And all these people are saying they need the app and they're not getting it. Now, uh, it says here that the social media accounts on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter have had no activity since early November. The company's online support system is offline. All of their emails to the company and to the co-founder have gone unanswered, and yet they are still selling the product. So they are completely happy to take your money for something that will never work as it is advertised on their own website because they have pulled the app. It says here, the corporation behind Narbox, the product is... Mignar Inc., which is incorporated in Delaware, but also has a branch in Santa Monica where its headquarters were. An online search for the corporation shows that the status changed from active to forfeited in around October of 2021. Now, it's one thing if your company is forfeited or if your company goes out of business or is in the process of going out of business. I've had companies that went out of business before. My old supply company failed. And even as that supply company was failing, I was still honoring the warranty for people during that time period. And I also made information about the products. I left it available for quite a bit of time. If you created an app that is necessary to use a product, how are you still going to sell that product and continue to collect money? of the sale of that product while simultaneously not making the app available. What is the cost to you to make that app available? What is the cost to you to just make to, to make this available on GitHub or something else so that people can get access to it so that they can use your product? I get that if you're using an iPhone that you're semi-screwed because unless you jailbreak an iPhone, you're kind of stuck installing the app via the App Store. I don't know what kind of arrangement I have there. But for you know other 
smartphones, other platforms, other anything else. This really sucks, and it really does beg the question of who owns the product. If you purchase a product that's supposed to have, again, again one-touch backup, automatic organization, uh, you know, an application for your workflow, you know, the ability to decode all these different video and photo formats, and you don't make the app available anymore, but you still sell the product, who owns it? Do they own it, or do you own it? And the fact that a company can have the balls to sell something where the advertising on their website does not match what actually happens when you get it because you're not getting access to an app, that's just it just really seems to be a sign of the times and demonstrate how far we've fallen with regards to just general ethics when it comes to selling something. I think this is insane, and I think that this company and the people who run it, if they refuse to respond and make this app available should be absolutely ashamed of themselves. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And what do you think of this? Again, what, what do you think of buying a product where the use of that product is dependent on an app that does not come in the box? Because you have to understand, even if a company goes out of business, when you're purchasing a product where a floppy disk or a CD-ROM comes in the box with the software that is necessary to utilize the device, you could at least feel somewhat secure in the fact that it will be usable as is. But when you have something where you have to install an external app to use it, that seems a little insane to me. And I would dare make the assumption or the implicate or the statement there that you no longer own it. So, for instance, you know, I have a little DJI uh, action camera. And something that really pissed me off when I bought it is that I could not use the camera. I could not insert a micro SD card and do a recording with it until I paired it to my phone and utilized a DJI app on my phone to use the camera. So if that app were no longer available, I could buy that camera for, and if it was never used before, not actually use the camera that I purchased because of the app. And this is something that I think is going to become more and more important as this becomes more and more prevalent amongst more and more companies. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'll stop rambling. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something.